Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. Hello everybody. Today we are painting a cupcake and this is the painting that we did on Tuesday in Creative Spirits class. So we'll be using, I'll be using this actually as my reference, but I also have the um, photo that I'm going to share with you guys up on my computer monitor so I can look at it as well. So I'm actually painting it a little bit smaller. It's part of our summer series where we're working in what we call daily paintings, and those are paintings that are much smaller. Normally, a, day, a daily painting is 6 by 6 or 6 by 8. This is actually 8 by 10. I wanted to do it a little bit bigger so you could see it. But if you're going to do daily painting, you want to do it rather small so that you can paint it in about 30 minutes. And we also choose, as a daily painting, subjects that are pretty uncomplicated. So it's basically an object or a group of objects um, in a still life is what you normally see. So with this particular painting, I started with a red underpainting, which is not something we normally do, but I want to use a lot of water. And actually, I don't want to mess up that brush by scrubbing with it. Let me see. We'll use a bigger brush here. And we're going to make it real watery and really thin. We paint thick over thin, so we want that first coat to be rather thin. And we're basically just toning our canvas. Now in Creative Spirits class, I did not put a grid on our reference photo since it is just, you know, basically a little object that we're painting. If you need the grid though, I'll go ahead and add it to the photo I give you guys. I'm going to thicken that up just a little bit, make it a little darker. And the reason why I didn't need it for the Creative Spirits class is it just, it just really, you can just eyeball it and it'll work. You don't always have to put a grid on there. That's just to help you lay in the basic shape. So I'm going to take my paper towel, wrap it around my finger, dip it in some water, and then start let's see, right about here. wiping out my shape here.
Okay. So if you can see what I have done, let me get some light on here. I did the underpainting incredibly wet so I, it couldn't dry on me and then that way I was able to wipe out my lights and just left the mid-tone as my dark. So now I have a road map or basic shapes in which to paint on. And because it was so wet, uh, we might want to give it a second to dry. If not, you can paint over that. It's so little pigment, it's probably not going to adjust your, your color, but it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. Now, if you ever read the Carol Marine book on daily painting, she likes to paint what she calls islands to oceans. So you basically paint your subject matter first and then you just put in the background later. Now I typically start with a background and come forward. That's what's more comfortable for me. But on Tuesday in Creative Spirits class, we went ahead and did the islands to oceans. And we started at the top with our raspberry. Okay, at this point, I think I want to let my painting rest and then maybe compare it to the original or compare it to the photo and see how I like it. It does have more highlights than the original, so I could go back and Soften those a little bit by painting in the the negative shapes. Or if I like them, I can just leave them. And I'm not sure that I don't like them. definitely don't look the same. That one's kind of got a glare on it. There we go. And that one does have a glare, so let's do it this way. They definitely don't look the same. But I think I like it. Contact me if you have any um, questions or comments. I'm not sure how it took us to paint this, but it's rather quick.
If you want to do the uh, daily painting, um, Dwayne Kaiser is the artist who started that trend back in 2004. If you want to look up some information on him, he spells his last name K-E-I-S-E-R. And he started doing daily paintings because the um, galleries just were not interested in small paintings. Yet the large paintings were not affordable to his friends and followers. So he started doing the small six by sixes, selling them on eBay at $100 to start the bidding. And they sold anywhere from $100 to $4,000 each. And so you can imagine what a lovely um, supplemental income stream that would be if these are the reject paintings that the galleries won't take. And it's not that they're inferior in any way or lack any of the same quality or beauty. It's just that they're small. And um, I started doing this in 2012, I think. And one of the misconceptions about daily painting is that you have to do it every day. I tried to do five days a week. So I cut myself some slack not to have to do it on the weekends. And it would be the first thing I did when I got up in the morning. So I'd still be in my pajamas and I would paint my painting. Then I had my painting done for the day. And, you know, if, as long as you've got all your supplies sitting out, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and I had a room that I could just leave them out. But if you have a table in the corner of a room, that would be fine. And it builds up your skills. In fact, it builds up your skills um, quite quickly. I think it was, um, oh, what's that gentleman's name? His name escapes me, but he said it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert at something. Well, it really only takes about 25 to be really good. So if you can just commit 25 hours over the next month, to paint a painting a day or a painting every five uh, five paintings a week then you're going to see your your skills improved and i hope you enjoyed this and i look forward to painting with you next time